Welcome to Erica's Tea Room. My name is Erica, and together with my mom, Lila, we share our passion for cooking great food, trying interesting teas, and having good times with family and friends. Hold on to your hats as we kick off a new season of cooking and baking at Erica's Tea Room. Stay tuned as we share and make some of our favorite recipes with you live. Feel free to ask us questions in the comment section or email us directly. Stop by our location in downtown Claremont and join us for a high tea experience. We look forward to meeting you and making memories with every cup. Shanoff, and here's my mom, Lila. Hi, everyone. We want to welcome you to season two of our cooking show, Cooking at Erica's Tea Room. When you think of a tea room, you also think of English pub food, and tonight we're paying homage to one of our favorite pub food items, chicken pasties. Yes, we're going to do a chicken pasty, and we're going to do a dessert pasty, too, Erica. Is that the way you would pronounce that word, pasty? Absolutely. I always thought it was a pasty. No, pasties are something else you wear. This is what you eat. Oh, good to know. So tonight, we're starting something brand new this season. We are going live. And what does that mean? It means that you can comment in the box on Facebook as we're performing tonight, and you can ask questions, make comments, we want to hear from you. Please feel free to type in what you have a question about. Also, if you want to see something else live, we'll do it for you. So let us know what you'd like to see on one of our upcoming episodes, and we will definitely keep that in mind and try to make that happen for you. Over the last um, season, we had a lot of fun. Our first six episodes you can find on our Facebook page or YouTube channel, and you can check all of those out. With our first season, we did a reality version where you saw a piece of our evening events that we do, our tea tastings, and a cooking segment. This season, we're going to be doing everything in the kitchen, 100%, and as I've already said, live. Are you sure we're live, Erica? I'm being dead today, but nobody would leave me alone. So we're going to start by doing our chicken pasties, and I like to do things simple. I want to teach you from scratch how to do these in a very easy way. What ingredients are you going to use today? That's a good question. Since it's chicken pasties, because you could do beef pasties or Cornish pasties, I'm using already boiled chicken breasts. I'm going to do a miracle of onions, celery, and carrots, and I'll show you that in a minute. So first things up, I'm going to take a little hand chopper and chop up our chicken breast. Just pull it apart, stick it in there, and I'm going to chop this sucker up. You don't need a lot because this goes a long way. You know, for a family of four, you want to do a pasty each. So here it goes. Forgive my noise. chicken breast is and look how much it made. Again, I boil my chicken breasts uh, right in a little of the low sodium chicken broth and look how nice that did. I'm going to put that back up because after I cook my onions and make my miracle, I'm going to add that in. You see it's a little dry. I use chicken breasts instead of chicken thighs. You can use chicken thighs if you'd rather. I'm going to put that aside and cut up my onion. Also, very small onion, a half of a slice of celery. I wash this, cut off my ends, and just gonna get this into the pot and start frying. Um, I'm not gonna add a lot of oil to this either. And you see, I'm doing a, a, a really a rough cut because it doesn't matter. I'm gonna grind this all up because I don't want big slices like this in my chicken. If you wanted something chunkier, you're welcome to keep the pieces bigger and do a more chunky filling. We just like a little bit more of a smooth center. And I'm going to cook this until it's pretty tender. And there we go. We should pretty much be done there. And let me put a little oil in the pan. I'm using an 8-inch skillet. 
and then I'm only going to add in a touch, and I use canola oil. I'm only going to use a touch of canola oil. That's it. So if you're asking me, oh, see something fell. If you're asking me how much oil I used, and if you want to measure it, it's about a tablespoon of oil. Okay. Now I'm going to put this, well, let me put everything in first. Now, the reason I put it in first, because you're adding wetness to a hot, to a hot pan, it'll start to sizzle and, and splatter. <laughs> I'm going to say spit at you. It's the truth. It does. It makes a little popping, spinning sound. So I'm going to put this up on high now. And if you have a gas stove, it's a little different than the electric stove. You see how it comes and gets heat up right away? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to cook this up until it's nice and brown. And while that's cooking, I'll show you the other ingredients. So I have frozen carrots here. And I have two tablespoons of butter. I also am going to use a half a packet of onion soup mix. This will be all the spices. And of course, my trilogy of spices. If you watched me last year, I always use garlic, pepper, and onion. And again, we have finished with the oil. So we're going to let this get to, to heating, and then we'll make our um, miracle. I'm not putting the frozen carrots in first because I want this to get a little brown first and start heating. The reason I use frozen carrots instead of fresh carrots is I want the liquid that this is going to produce. So this is the only liquids that I'm going to put into the whole miracle and add to my chicken. Why doesn't she want all that extra liquid, you may ask? Well, I just said it. Because we're going to make this into little, um, almost like meatballs, and put it in the middle of the uh, pastry shells that we're going to use. So we're going to take a break while we wait for those onions and celery to brown up a little bit. And we'll be right back with you. Have you tried any of our evening events? Our theme nights, our painting nights, are all fun, different ways to try a tea experience. Coming up, we have so many things to choose from, from a tote bag painting night, to a murder mystery, to our themes. Try one of those out. You can see our entire calendar on our website and on our Facebook page. Check out the menus, each course paired with a tea, fun activities, and you will love the experience. Here are some of the events that we have coming up. Don't forget to RSVP. We look forward to seeing you soon at Erica's Tea Room. wants to host their own tea party. I'm Erica, owner of Erica's Tea Room in downtown Claremont, and we are happy to announce our new edition of mobile tea parties. What is a mobile tea party, you may ask? Well, it's a tea party that we do all the work and bring everything to you at your location. Your house, your office, your location. You tell us where and we'll show up and we do the work. You enjoy your day while we set everything up and make sure your party is running smoothly. Keep us in mind for your next mobile tea party. Tea Room. Located in the heart of downtown Claremont, this specialty tea shop offers a traditional high tea experience that can be enjoyed with family and friends. While here, you can choose from over 100 teas from all over the world, and a multitude of teapots are available for purchase. Join us for lunch or choose from one of our special evening events. Call to make a reservation. Erica's Tea Room. Memories with every cup. So I wanted to show you, I had some that I made a little earlier today, 
You know, a watch pot never fries or never boils, whatever the saying goes. So I'm letting my onions and, um, and my miroquois start to go. I want it to get nice and brown. You see all the little brown chunks in here? And you see how thick that is? That's what we're looking to do because I want to make little meatballs and I'm going to show you how to make the pastries very easy. But while I'm stirring the onions and stuff, Erica's going to tell you some real interesting things that are happening at the tea room. So thank you for joining us for our second piece of our segment. I know you just saw some of our ads about some of our upcoming events. This weekend, we have a 70s sitcom night. If you've never tried one of our events, we love hosting our tea tastings. And we have them in all kinds of different formats. Each one of our tea tastings is a four course dinner with four different teas. Of course, it always comes back to the teas and making tea pairings. Then, in between each course, we do a fun game or an activity. So this weekend, we'll have Name That Tune and trivia related to 70 sitcoms. And I might just have a little fun activity up my sleeve that I'm not going to share yet. Also coming up, we've got lots going on for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and we're going to celebrate all weekend long. One with our event. And then on Saturday evening, we're going to be hosting Bachelor in Paradise, a murder mystery. Who's so, going to get that deadly rose? Is it you? So I need a bachelor. <laughs> Will you be the bachelor selected? But definitely check out our website, ericasteeroom.com, to see all of our upcoming events. Later in February, we'll also be having an Alice in Wonderland evening. And something new that we are offering now in 2020 is our mobile tea party option. If you live a little further out and can't get to the tea room to enjoy a tea party with us, give us a call and we will bring the tea parties to you. Dreamed always about having an outdoor tea party, maybe something by the side of the lake? We will do that with you. We'll do all the work so you can enjoy a special day with your family and friends. Give us a call and let us know if we can answer any question about our mobile tea parties. How are onions and celery looking? It's starting to brown, but I wish you could smell the flavor. I love the smell of, fr of fried onions. I love fried onions. It's just starting to taste. And at this point, I'm adding in, again, the frozen carrots. And the reason I'm using it, I want all that nice liquid. Additionally, I'm going to add my flavoring to it, which is a little pepper. And if you want to measure it, thinner eggs, a teaspoon of pepper, onion and garlic. Okay. <laughs> Everything's work. Oh, you see, I had a hit in Erica and then it came out. Everything's working. Everything needs a little, a good tap on the bottom once in a while. Yeah, it didn't want to come out until I tapped it. But you see also, putting the spice in, it's starting to get it to fry a little higher. Now you hear the real sizzle, snap, crack, and pop. Is it onions and Ameriquai, or is it <laughs> Rice Krispies? Yeah, now it's coming really, really nice. I'm going to add my um, half a pack of French onion soup. It and really glazes the vegetable and gives a really nice extra addition to the spices. And it's also, it, look how nice the color is. It's all of the spice you really need in there. And then last but not least, I'm going to put in your two tablespoons of butter. Everything's good with butter. Butter. You'd think she was uh, Paula Dean over here. It's not Paula Dean. You know who I used to watch, Erica, when I was a kid? I used to watch um, Julia Childs. I used to love Julia Childs. She was really a good, good cook. She Especially used, if you like your butter. And she used to do everything with butter. But it just, just a little bit of butter. Look how beautiful that looks. Doesn't that look beautiful? It looks delish. This would be great over some pasta. <laughs> yes, but we're going to put it in the chicken to make our chicken pasties. So people always ask me why mommy cooks the way she does. She adds a lot of different things into one space. And I always say it's because of me. I was a very picky eater, and sometimes I still am. So she had to camouflage or hide things healthy in other things to get me to eat them. So this was a way for her to get different vegetables in to something that's going to be a handhold pocket. 
the truth is, because you have carrots in here and celery in here and onions, you have nice vegetables in here. But in here, you don't really see it. It's, I always used to, as Erica said, camouflage vegetables so I could get it in her. Now I don't have to do that anymore. She eats anything I give her, for the most part. One thing that she would have loved to put in these pasties today were mushrooms. And I'm still a no mushroom girl, so. Yeah, Erica calls mushrooms fungus, and I don't blame her. <laughs> I still but, call them worms. But I love, love mushrooms. And yes, you could put mushrooms in here and really it would add another dimension. But look how beautiful that looks. I'm just cooking this until I can put my fork through the carrot, which it just went through, and through celery. The celery is a little bit more stubborn, so I'm going to wait another minute. Let this simmer one more second and um, talk to you about the rest of the pasties. We can get them set up while we're waiting for that to finish. So I'm going to take a beautiful pan. I lined it with my parchment paper. And you can make an actual dough to make a pasty. I want to show you how to do it with Grand's biscuits. Sometimes you need to work smarter and not harder. So a dough is probably one of the hardest things to ever make. So to, in today's world, there's so many options that you don't have to start from scratch every single time you want to do something. So I'm going to make two of our chicken pasties, and then I'll show you again how to make um, some dessert pasties on the side. So here are two uh, grams, and I'm going to show you what to do. We should have started with dessert first. Yeah. And the reason I keep those in the refrigerator is it has to be cold. This splits so nicely on the side when they're so cold like this. If it starts getting warm, you're not going to split them so easily. You can take a knife in and really uh, get it to go, but if it's cold like this, look how beautiful it splits. And don't worry if it's not half and half. Okay? Now, while I'm How's your my onions? I just mixed them oh, up a looks, little bit. Looks, look, 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 just another few minutes. I want it a little more brown. I'm going to take what I made before and show you how to fill this. And then we'll see how thick that is. I want to make it almost into a meatball. Look. This will be a very tasty <laughs> meatball. A tasty meatball. Spicy the meatball. Tasty meatball. I'm going to stick it right in the middle of our pasty. And do a second one. Okay. And put it into the next pasty, and I'll show you how to close these up. So hold that over there, baby. And you keep an eye on that, okay, okay babes? So you put your lid on, and you actually pinch the sides. Look how nice that is. And it looks so beautiful when you finish. So I'm just doing it loosely now. I'm going to put it on this side and then do my next pasty. And it really has a nice amount of meat in it, but the reason I want it in the middle, it's easier to squeeze the sides. See how nice that does? Harry, shut, the, shut that uh, off. And last, what I'm going to do, can I have the fork? Yes. <laughs> I take a fork and I go around all the edges. What this does, and look, you put it in like quarter of an inch in and you pull it out a little. It makes a very pretty design, but also it actually seals it so nothing comes out once it's cooked. We don't want any oozing. Not that this has a lot of liquid to it, but you could do something with a little more liquid and this actually seals a little pocket that holds all the nice meat inside. Yummy, yummy for my tummy. And look how pretty that is. Look how nice. Doesn't it look beautiful? I'm going to just do the second one. Again, pulling it down and out. And it actually makes it look like a little butterfly. Like a butterfly or flower. Isn't that pretty? Looks delish to me. Doesn't look delish yet, but wait till it browns out. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> but I'm going to just finish this up. And because I'm going to do the dessert pasties on the same tray, and I'm giving it a little room, it rises slightly, puffs out just a little bit. I'm going to actually put a C on this for chicken. <laughs> so with my fork, I'm going to actually put a C. 
And this way I can put the dessert ones right on here. And look, look how nice. See? And if you're worried about somebody stealing your pasta, you could always put your initial on so you know which <laughs> one's yours. That's true, Erica. You would always think about that. Hey, I don't know where you've been. Yes. I'm going to now take the onions and show you how to make that mixture. So here is this. I'm going to take another pan. And I'm going to show you how to grind up um, the onions. So look how beautiful those onions came up. Aren't those gorgeous? And just with a little butter. So you would take half of this at a time and put it into the little mixer. I love the little mixer. You could always pick up the big one, and I have one in the corner there, but this it just works so well. And now I'm not taking all the oil off of it. I'm just taking some of the oil. Just have a little bit of extra moisture in there. Actually, it's the butter. It's not oil, but okay. And I'm putting as much as I can in. I could do half at a time, or I could do all of it, and then I'm going to grind it up. Be careful, but I don't want you to get burned with that pan. And here it goes again. Sorry, guys. Now, one more shake. Shake, 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 shake. And don't worry if there's pieces left in here. There's no problem. There's no problem on my it also helps when you sing for your food. It's like singing for your supper. Yeah, you do, Erica, sing for your supper? I do. I uh, do. You? What happened to my big? Okay. Okay, I'll use a little spoon. That's better. I'm going to put this in here. We're going to grind up the rest of this, and then we just toss this all together, and you're going to have what I have there. And it's so nice. We also like to let the center cool down a little bit before we start putting it into the pocket. It's it makes it a little bit easier to, of course, handle and form into that ball. So we like to do some of the prep work for this a little bit beforehand, and then we can bake it later on. Yeah, so I'm leaving those there because I'm not finished with that. I'll show you the last steps of that pasties after we do the dessert pasties. You know what this is doing? It's sticking to the uh, board. I'm going to just put the rest in without getting all the butter in. A little butter is good because you, the chicken is a little dry. And again, because it's not chicken thighs, it's chicken... Um, White meat, chicken breasts. Chicken breasts. Okay, let's leave this over there carefully, baby. Thank you. I'm going to do the last of this. One more. beautiful that is. It even smells. So your, all your spices are already in this. You're not adding anything else to this chicken. Because you have your, your pepper and your onion and your garlic. Plus you have the, um, the little half packet of your French onion soup mix. So this is it in a nutshell. I'm going to stir this up. And look how nice that is. This is enough moisture to really get this to form your your little pastas. Now I had refrigerated refrigerated this so before I put it into the dough because again we don't want that dough to get too hot. Then it starts getting a little gooey and it makes it harder to work with. Look how beautiful that is. That looks delicious. I would eat it just the way it is. Well taste it. I want you to. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. It's fabulous. So I'm going to add this to this. And now we're going to try a dessert pasty. When we come back, I'm going to do the dessert pasties. We'll get these into the oven and see how they come out. We'll be back in a minute. Hello. Are you a fan of Erica's Tea Room? Well, get started with our Refer a Friend program. After your 10 friends have brought their cards back, you will receive a free luncheon here at Erica's. For every new friend that comes and visits us, they'll receive a tea pack sampler. Get started today. Pick up your pack at Erica's Tea Room. Stop by and see what our Refer a Friend program is all about. Welcome to the Great Floridian Marketplace. We're doing Jump Into 2020 with 20% off all men's and women's clothing. Is this included? Erica, it's clothing. How about that? This is men's clothing. How about that? Women's clothing. 
and that? Clothing. Yes. How about the bracelets? Well, we're doing some bracelets to match the clothing, 20% off. So come in today for your 20% off. Things are flying out the door. Have you tried any of our evening events? Our theme night, our painting night, are all fun, different ways to try a tea experience. Coming up, we have so many things to choose from, from a tote bag painting night, to a murder mystery, to our themes. Try one of those out. You can see our entire calendar on our website and on our Facebook page. Check out the menus, each course paired with a tea, fun activities, and you will love the experience. Here are some of the events that we have coming up. Don't forget to RSVP. We look forward to seeing you soon at Erica's Tea Room. that Eric and I talk over each other and people think it's one voice. It's so funny, we just got back from our buying trip, a week of shops you drop to fill both stores with beautiful new things. And we can be on two different sides of a showroom and we'll meet in the middle with the same exact item, maybe in a different color, color. maybe. <laughs> so we're back and we've got our chicken pasties ready to go. But now let's turn our pasties into a dessert. And again, I took two more grams. I'm going to cut them in half right out of the refrigerator because if I had them sitting out, they would not split so easily. Look how easy this splitting for me. So I'm going to do one and then two dessert pasties because Erica will have Erica and I are having dinner. We'll have one chicken pasty and we'll have a dessert pasty. So as soon as we sign off, I get to chow down. No, you don't. He's starving me. So what I did is I took my favorite apple pie filling. You could use any apple pie filling. Again, just put enough into the center. Don't overstuff these. So I'm going to take this one because it's a little wider and just put like a teaspoon into the center. Of course, you can make your own apple pie filling, but there's so many great varieties out there and you don't have to choose, of course, an apple. So, yes. you know, you decide whether you want to put those extra little steps in, but this makes it super easy to have something very, very tasty, very, very quick and easy. So here's your apple pies. I'm going to cover them up just like I did with the chicken pasties. I'm going to crunch the, the sides together. So if the little, look how the apple comes to the end, just pull it over and do a little crunch because we're going to use the fork afterwards. See how it comes out a little? So stretch it over. Stretch, stretch. stretch it over and what we're going to do is actually put the um, use a fork. Ooh, piece of apple fell out. That's okay, his brother needs a little extra. Okay, and I'm going to do this one too. Harry, while I'm doing this, can you heat up? I have two tablespoons of butter sitting ready to go in the microwave and I just need it for 30 seconds, honey. And what we're going to do with the butter is we're going to actually coat this pasties, oh, I hear it already sparking my... Popping. Popping in my microwave. Okay, whoa, stop it. <laughs> it just messed up my microwave, I understand, babe, but it's okay. Oh, here, honey, here, 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 good. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my fork. I'm gonna do around the whole sides with my fork. Ari, is there a brush there? Yes, there is. So I'm gonna use my little pastry brush to actually brush these pasties. Now, if I wanted to, I could brush this with butter and add a little garlic on the top. If you really are a person who loves garlic or any other spice, you could put a little basil, some um, rosemary, you could do any other spice with that or you could just brush it like I'm gonna do and leave it. So I'm going to do my apple so I hopefully do not have apple spilling out all over the place. If you do, it happens. It's and it's no biggie. No biggie. Absolutely not. It tastes the same. 
but this is just going to cinch up my apples. And you saw how it stuck the parchment, it came right back up. So nice, nice, nice. So I'm putting this here. I'm going to take my butter and I'm going to brush first the um, chicken pasties and then I'm going to brush the other one, um, the dessert pasties. And I have a little tiny bit. It's one tablespoon of sugar and a teaspoon of cinnamon mixed together on that plate. And you see I'm putting a nice helping of the butter on top and all it does is allows it to bake a little more even. And Gives then, it that nice brown crust that you want. Yep. Yeah. And then on the dessert pasties, I'm going to do the cinnamon sugar. So again, we marked that one with a C. I'm going to mark these with an A for apple. I taught her how to spell this week. Yes. So I, I got past the A's, Erica. She got to C. <laughs> Next week? I'll teach you E. E. For Erica. Oh, thank you. I don't, know, I don't know how to spell your names. Everybody used to tell me I spell Erica's name with a K. They told me I spelled her name wrong. It's okay. For the first 30 years of my life, my aunt could not spell my name properly with a K. So this is the beautiful pasties. Look how nice those look. We're going to stick this in the 350 degree oven, and in 10 minutes, it'll be nice and brown and ready to eat. We'll be right back after this break. We'll see how these come out of the oven. Welcome to Erica's Tea Room. Located in the heart of downtown Claremont, this specialty tea shop offers a traditional high tea experience that can be enjoyed with family and friends. While here, you can choose from over 100 teas from all over the world, and a multitude of teapots are available for purchase. Join us for lunch or choose from one of our special evening events. Call to make a reservation. Erica's Tea Room, making memories with every cup. Who wants to host their own tea party? I'm Erica, owner of Erica's Tea Room in downtown Claremont, and we are happy to announce our new edition of mobile tea parties. What is a mobile tea party, you may ask? Well, it's a tea party that we do all the work and bring everything to you at your location. Your house, your office, your location. You tell us where and we'll show up and we do the work. You enjoy your day while we set everything up and make sure your party is running smoothly. Keep us in mind for your next mobile tea party. Hello, are you a fan of Erica's Tea Room? Well, get started with our Refer a Friend program. After your 10 friends have brought their cards back, you will receive a free luncheon here at Erica's. For every new friend that comes and visits us, they'll receive a tea pack sampler. Get started today. Pick up your pack at Erica's Tea Room. Stop by and see what our Refer a Friend program is all about. Welcome to the Great Floridian Marketplace. We're doing Jump Into 2020 with 20% 20 off all men's and women's clothing. Is this included? Erica, it's clothing. How about that? This is men's clothing. How about that? Women's clothing. And that? Clothing. Yes. How about the bracelets? Well, we're doing some bracelets to match the clothing, 20% off. So come in today for your 20% off. Things are flying out the door. Well, the pasties are out of the oven. I'm going to cut them open. But first, Erica wants to tell you about some teas to have with these pasties. Of course, it's all about the tea pairings for me. So I like to pair my savories with something spicy. So tonight, for my chicken pasty, I'm going to pair it with my cinnamon fig tea. You can see in the fig, the pieces of the fig and the cinnamon and all of those beautiful black tea leaves. 
And I wish you could smell this because it's absolutely divine. A lot of people ask me what these are. <laughs> these are our tea sacks that we use to prepare a nuff for a pot of tea. So everyone knows Mary. She's in the other room, our tea barista. And she is monitoring comments on the live feed right now and will be um, our monitor, <laughs> our school monitor, um, on our live feed each week. But what she does is she prepares a few of these so that when somebody orders a certain tea that she can just pop it into a teapot and add the water. Basically, it's like make your own tea bag, but it's a biodegradable sachet and we make it big enough for it to go into a small or a big pot. So that's about three heaping tablespoons in there. We tie it off in a knot and then we pop it in here. We don't keep a lot of them in here at one time because of our climate. We don't want any moisture to get in there. And then for the perfect complement to our apple pasties, I have apple cinnamon coffee cake. One of my favorites. You can see in the tea leaves, the big chunks of dried apple, cinnamon stick, there's little cocoa nibs in there. It is the perfect complement to my apple pasties, that perfect little apple pie bite. And uh, to me, this is just, it, it's just the perfect cup of tea. So it's one of my personal favorites. It tastes like fresh baked apple pie and it is going to go perfectly with that apple pasty as soon as I get to take a bite. I want you to know none of these teas have sugar in them. So that's a big thing. So if you, you know, and I didn't put a lot of sugar in anything you see here too. So I'm gonna do this first. This is our apple pie. Look how beautiful that is. And I'm gonna open the other one for you to actually see the inside. And it's nice and soft, just like a pastry shell. Look at the apple inside. Isn't that beautiful? It's like inside a jelly donut. <laughs> so we have lots of different cameras right now, so it's which camera to show the best angle for that center of that pasty. I don't even know how to angle it. Look how gorgeous that is. I can't wait to take a bite out of it. Nice pastry shell. Now our chicken pasties, again, look how beautiful that is. Nice and soft on the outside, and you have all that good uh, chicken on the inside. Look how beautiful that is. It's like the perfect handhold item Instead of putting your filling into a sandwich, you've got your own little perfect pocket. This is considered a street food in England. So yes, you can get it in a pub if you were going versus going to a tea room. But this would be a perfect thing to pick up and walk around where you're spending a day in London and just want to go and stroll and go through the cute little shops. I just really, you see the orange of the... Uh carrots and the green. Look how beautiful that is. And you have that nice soft shell. So I really like using the grams to make these because it, it adds to the flavor. Now you could do a dough out of flour and water and eggs and roll it out, but it's a bigger process. Here you can have your pasties. And first of all, these are nice sizes. So we could do a sauce to this. Um, in England, they do what they call Heinz 57. It's almost like a... It's uh, not our ketchup. No. If you ever go to the British section of the store, the Heinz 57 is more like a barbecue sauce. It's, it's a brown like, sauce, a little spicier, almost like a barbecue sauce. And on the... Uh, these already have the sugar coating on it, so this is perfect. The only thing is maybe some of my white chocolate Devon cream on this. Maybe. That goes with everything. Do we have a question, Mary? We do. So Diana wants to know if they freeze well. Ah. Great question. Now, I never froze these before, but I would tell you to freeze them raw, and then when you're ready to cook them, cook them that way. I wouldn't cook them first because it would change the uh, outside filling. Great question. So come on, ask some more questions. I love questions. Remember, you can ask us questions just by typing it in on Facebook as we're live in the kitchen recording. Or you can always feel free to email us any questions. And we can also send you directly the recipes that way. We will type them up and send those to you at your request. We have a new website coming out over the next couple of weeks. And we will have a place that all of the recipes that we show on the shows that will, they will be listed there. So keep your eye out for that. That is coming very shortly on our new website. 
Also, keep in mind, this month at the Great Floridian Marketplace, our other shop, we are doing a jump into 2020 with the 20% off all women's and men's clothing. It took, er it took Erica a good amount of time, as you could see in our ad, to figure out what was included. I can't help that I have blonde moments. I'll be blonder tomorrow night when I go and see my beautician. <laughs> I think she's a beautician, not a magician, but we'll go there and see what happens. So definitely stop in at the boutique and see our 20% off all women's and men's clothing, as well as those fabulous Laura Janelle bracelets that I was modeling in the commercial. Any questions, feel free to contact us. If not, we will see you next Monday, 7 p.m., same bat time, same bat place. We hope that you will come and join us and please share all of our episodes and our Facebook page with all of your friends so that they can enjoy with us. And we're going to be doing things such as honey and uh, all kinds of things made with honey. Oh yeah. One of my favorite things is our honey cake, which is made with our cloister honey that we carry here in the shop, but also a little trick to it is that one of our teas is in the bag. Wow. That's one, and we'll maybe use honey bush to change it up a little bit. And then we're going to do some Valentine treats coming up. We have lots of good shows coming up. And if there's anything you'd like to see me make, just let me know and I'll make it for you. We hope to see you real soon here at Erica's Tea Room, where we're making memories with every cup. Welcome to Erica's Tea Room. My name is Erica, and together with my mom, Lila, we share our passion for cooking great food, trying interesting teas, and having good times with family and friends. Hold on to your hats as we kick off a new season of cooking and baking at Erica's Tea Room. Stay tuned as we share and make some of our favorite recipes with you live. Feel free to ask us questions in the comments section or email us directly. Stop by our location in downtown Claremont and join us for a high tea experience. We look forward to meeting you and making memories with every cup.